So far we have been looking at graphs which consist of nodes and edges. Now we will look at weighted graphs where there are also some values or costs attached to the edges. So remember that BFS has the property that it will find out level by level the shortest path from an initial node to every other vertex in the graph. But if we have some costs associated with the edges, then this shortest path in terms of the number of edges is not necessarily the shortest path that we are interested in. So in a weighted graph, we assign costs or weights to each of the edges. So this is expressed as this function which we can sometimes write as W which takes every edge and assigns a real number to it. Right? So this could be any number, it could even be negative, we will see what it means to have a negative cost in the graph. But here is an example of a graph on the top right which has some numbers. So we have a cost of 80 for going to 0 to 2, we have a cost of 10 for going to 0 to 1 and so on. Right? So now if you take a weighted graph like this, we have to now represent it. So it is no longer enough to say whether there is an edge or not. We also have to say what is the weight of the edge. Now hypothetically you could have a, an edge with weight 0. So it is best to keep both quantities. So if we have an adjacency matrix, then in each cell of the matrix we keep two quantities. We keep a pair where the first item in the pair is the edge information. So this tells me there is no edge here. And of course if there is no edge the weight must be 0. But here it tells me there is an edge and the weight of that edge is 10. So if I look at 6 to 5, right, that is this edge, then it tells me that the weight of the edge from 6 to 5 is 10. Right? So this is one way of representing a weighted graph as a kind of weighted adjacency matrix. Right? So in each cell of the matrix, I have a pair of numbers or you can think of it as a three-dimensional matrix if you want. So each i, comma j has coordinate 0 which is the edge information and coordinate 1 which is the weight information. And we know that if there is no edge, there is no weight. Right? So if there is no edge, the weight must be 0. If there is an edge, the weight may still be 0. So just looking at the weight, I cannot tell if it is 0 or not. So I need to know both the edge and the weight. And if I want to have it in an adjacency list, then with each vertex, I will keep track of not just the outgoing vertices is connected to, but the weight of each of these edges. So this says that, for instance, 1 is connected to 0 with weight 10, it is connected to 2 with weight 6 and is connected to 4 with weight 20. Right? So the normal adjacency list would just have been 0, 2, 4. Right? So instead of just 0, 2, 4, I keep 0, 10, 2, 6, 4, 20 to keep track of the weights. So this is how we represent a weighted graph. The first problem that we will look at in the context of weighted graphs is the shortest path problem. Right? So as we said before, BFS computes the shortest path in number of edges, but this is not necessarily the shortest path in a weighted sense. So if you look at a weighted graph, we want to add up the costs as we go. So these costs could represent different things. It could represent time, it could represent distance and so on. So as I follow an edge, I incur a cost. And if I follow two edges, I incur the sum of the cost. So I add up all the weights along a path. Right? So here if you look at this example, right, the shortest path from 0 to 2 is actually of weight 16 via 1. Right? So it is a two-stop path, whereas if I take the shortest path in terms of number of edges, I can go directly from 0 to 2, but it will cost me 80. Right? So you can imagine if you have bought flight tickets, sometimes this happens, a direct flight is more expensive than a flight which hops because it is more inconvenient for the passenger and possibly goes through less uh, uh, serviced destinations. Right? So this is not something which is unusual, this is something that we have, we do encounter in real life. Right? So we can just say that there is no direct way of correlating the number of edges on the path with the total weight of the path. So we need a separate strategy in order to find shortest paths and weighted graphs. So there are multiple problems that we will look at. So the first problem is one where we are starting from a fixed vertex which is called the source and we are looking at the shortest path to every other vertex in the graph. Right? So this is called the single source shortest path problem. So this could be of interest for instance if you have a centralized facility like a warehouse or a factory from where you have to ship out things. Right? So what happens for instance when you get something by courier is that it arrives on a flight from a city and it all gets dumped in some central office inside that city. Then from there the courier company has to decide for each of the parcels how to send it out to your home. Right? So this now 
amounts to computing the shortest path from that courier facility to everybody's house. So this is the single source shortest path problem. Another problem is to find the shortest path between all pairs of vertices. So for instance, if you are running a travel website, then at any given point, a customer might ask to go from any city on your website to any other city and you must be able to find out in terms of different quantities, time, price, whatever, the best way. Right? So you need to quickly compute for every pair of cities, you need to be able to answer this question. So this is an all pairs shortest path problem. So we mentioned that the weights can be arbitrary real numbers. So you can try to imagine what it would mean to have a negative weight or a negative cost. Now suppose you have, a, you are running a taxi, right? so you are a driver of a Ola or an Uber and now towards the end of your shift, you would ideally like to finish your run close to home so that you have less time to go before you reach your destination. So at this point, if you travel without a passenger, you are incurring a cost right? because you are spending fuel and you are not gaining any income. So a road which takes you towards your home but along which you are not likely to find any passengers because it is a very quiet road is likely to have one with positive cost. Whereas if you follow a road which may be more long winded in terms of the time it takes you to go home but it passes through a busy area where there are likely to be customers, then this you could incur as a, think of as a negative cost because you will actually earn money going there. Right? So now if you want to find a route that minimizes the cost, you might want to choose a combination of these busy roads and these quiet roads so that you kind of optimize on the distance and the, and the money that you earn. Now when you have negative edges in a graph, one of the dangers is that you could have a situation like this where you for example have a cycle where you have some minus 5, 6, minus 2 and 2, uh, so minus 5, minus 4. So if I look at this cycle, it has two negative edges, minus 5, minus 4 and it has two positive edges, 2 and 6. But if I go around the cycle and come back to the same point, then I have plus 8, minus 9, so my net gain is minus 1. So by going around the cycle, my cost reduces. So if I go around it one more time, my cost reduces again. So now if I have a path which comes from somewhere and goes somewhere else, if I look at if this is my source and this is my target and I am asking you the shortest path from S to T, then this quantity is not defined because I could go around the cycle as many times as I wanted to reduce the cost as much as I want. So if I have negative cycles, then this notion of shortest path does not exist. It does not make sense. But if I have negative edges and no negative cycles, we could still think of shortest paths and try to solve them. So to summarize, in a weighted graph, each edge has a cost and we can now represent this in an adjacency matrix or an adjacency list by explicitly representing the cost of every edge. Now when we follow a path in such a weighted graph, we add up the cost. Right? So the length of a path is not the length of the number of edges as we were doing for BFS, but it is the sum of the weights along these edges and we want to solve the shortest path problem with respect to this notion of path length, which is the number of the cost added up across the different things and there are two different problems that we will look at. The single source problem where I want to find the shortest path from a fixed vertex to every other vertex and the all pair shortest path problem which asks me to find the, uh, the shortest path from any vertex to any other vertex.